Danny? What's up, Trevor? It's not about them. It's about us, okay? All right. It's not about the other podcasts. It's about us. It's not about all the naysayers who said, oh, just because you have your initials make a catchy podcast name, you're not going to have a good podcast. It's not about them, Danny. Wow. It's about us. Listen, Danny, when we started this journey, yes. we knew it wasn't going to be easy. No. We knew there was going to be long Google Docs and days of editing, and I know it's tough carrying all these stuff from the sports office to the desk. Yeah. But guess what? We endured, Danny. <laughs> we made it through. And so now... It's not about tomorrow. It's not about the next episode. It's about now. It's about today. It's not about then. It's about here. We're coming. We're coming. Now give me my theme music. <laughs> that was good. I like that. That was a good cold open, man. All right, what's up, Western Oregon? Welcome back to the TD Show. Uh, college football now in full swing. An incredible week one. It always manages to live up to the hype. 100%. Right, Danny? Well, uh, an incredible week one for the Pac-12. I mean, the only conference to go undefeated. Uh, they look great. Yeah. I mean, everyone looked great from Cal taking on the North Texas Mean Green. Your oh, North Texas Mean Green in that's Denton. That's right. Denton, Texas. Uh, I mean, everyone. Stanford looked good against Hawaii, Oregon, yeah. Oregon State. I mean, the entire Pac-12 really just showed up. Yeah. And just the bright lights and everything. And I was super stoked. I mean, what a week one for college football. Yeah. Uh, I mean, couldn't ask for a better start to the year. Upsets from start to finish. Yes, I like sir. you shouting out even a Cal and a Stanford there at the end. Even Arizona State getting it done. And Kenny Dillingham's first game, 24-21. After, after dark at like 3 in the morning when they <laughs> yeah. finally finished. It but was like dust flying in everyone's eyes. Oh, it was like a God. war zone in there. But still, Jaden Rashada able to get it done. So, yes. yeah, complete domination by the Pac-12. And I feel like it's natural to start where we started this show. And that's with Coach Prime. What a debut. I mean, I will say I think we both had Colorado probably too far down in our Pac-12 standings. I had 100%. them. I think I said like five and seven. I Now I'm regretting that. But I will say I've always kind of said that Dion is going to work in this era of college football. If there was ever an era of college football, transfer portal, yeah. being able to turn around a roster. I mean, they 86 players gone from last year's 1-11 Colorado team. And then the NIL, the opportunities, branding. I thought maybe something would happen, but I cannot claim to – have any inkling of what was about to unfold on Saturday against number 17 TCU. 100%. I had my buddies over at like 9 in the morning when the game started. And that first drive, I was just like, all right, let's see what Boulder does against TCU. And, I mean, I, it caught everyone by surprise. Yeah. I mean, I had no idea they would come into TCO, TCU. Nobody did, I don't think. Like that. I mean, like, Shore Sanders, the freshman receiver, Edwards. Yeah. I mean, Travis Hunter. Yeah. Actual Heisman candidate after right. that game. Right. I mean, people are saying it, but I think Shadur Sanders was the best quarterback of week one. He Ooh, looked I like that. incredible. I mean, 500 yards. He was just poised in the pocket. Just peppering the ball all over the field. Oh, man. Accurate. Not trying to do too much. Just, just dinking and dunking, going for the deep shots. I mean, yeah, they were absolutely incredible. My favorite moment, it was a video that mm -hmm. uh, someone put out afterwards. It was like some TCU frat boys in like the front row were like, Throw it at Hunter, you won't. And then it's the play that Travis Hunter has like the most incredible interception ever. And that then the camera, wild. the camera pans back to them, and one of the frat guys is like, "Who said that? Who said that? <laughs> you can't jinx the boys. You can't jinx the oh, boys." Yeah. During a big game, but Travis Hunter, um, everything as advertised. Uh, shout out Gwinnett County. We produce greatness. <laughs> um, in my home county of suburban Atlanta, I mean, there I'm an go. athlete too. Travis Hunter's an athlete. Yes. Um, you know, I'm great at NCAA. He's great at playing every position on the football field. But that was insane. I don't think we've seen anything like that in a while. A 100-yard receiving game yeah. and then an interception on defense. 129 and snaps. Crazy, crazy. Crazy. I don't know how that dude wasn't dying, but it's kind of cool that – uh, Dion has a little clone of himself on the team because that's what he used to do yeah. at Florida yeah. State and in the NFL is be able to play both ways. They have a guy like that uh, in Travis Hunter. So I think, well, what's funny too is Travis Hunter put out a video. Everybody's got a podcast now. That's what I was saying. All these other podcasts yeah, competing. His, his called like Talk 12 or something like that. His, yeah, his, yeah, yeah. his four Heisman candidates were number one, Travis Hunter, number mm -hmm. two, Shadur Sanders, number three, Caleb Williams, and number four, Bo Nix. Bo Nix, yeah. And when he put that out, like everyone was just clowning him. Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Typical Colorado, like cockiness. No, like that might actually be the Heisman race right After now. After today's game, I think anything's possible with Colorado. I mean, I, like Amazing. I said, I also put Colorado way too low in my Pac-12 list. And after today, I mean, like, I'm scared for them to come play at Oregon. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to watch That's them play. That's coming up. 
Exactly. I'm excited to watch them play Nebraska at home. I think it's going to be one hell of a game to watch. Yeah. We'll see how Nebraska gets back after that, you know, heartbreaking loss. Another but, one, yeah, Nebraska and one score losses. Uh, a never ending it is, relationship. It is inevitable with Nebraska. But yeah, I mean, Colorado looked insane. Gus Johnson, Joel Clack calling that game was incredible. I mean, hearing Gus just yell, Travis yeah. Hunter, Shador Sanders, that was great. But yeah, I mean, big week one for the Pac 12, big week one in general. It was a great, great week one. Yeah, it was it was really incredible. Yeah, definitely with Colorado. Um, you know, you don't know. I mean, Having so much roster turnover, maybe depth could be an issue as we continue to go down the season. But we know for sure they have playmakers. Dylan Edwards, yeah. like you said, Jimmy Horn Jr., a guy from like USF that was balling out. Yeah, they had, they had some heads. dogs. They had heads all heads. over the field. Heads were there. They had dogs everywhere. Um, Nebraska's going to be interesting. And then the main thing I'm excited for with the Oregon game is the press conferences leading up to and after it. Yeah. Seeing how yeah. Coach Prime is going to kind of uh, react to what Dan Lanning said. Uh, at Oregon Media Day. Not a big reaction. I mean, I'm trying to remember when, what they won to affect this conference. I don't remember. Do you remember them winning anything? I don't remember them winning anything. Did you see Travis Hunter's reaction to that? What did he say? He I didn't was see basically, that. I mean, he's like, I mean, Dan Lanning's like not wrong. I mean, like, and he's, he's, he actually had a lot of praise for Dan Lanning. He's like, you know, he recruited me out of high school. So I actually have a good relationship with Dan Lanning. Yeah, to so Georgia, yeah. He was kind of like, yeah, I mean, yeah, Colorado, we have a lot to prove. So I, I think he reacted to it pretty well. But yeah, it's going to be exciting seeing those press conferences before and after. Yeah. Seeing how that pans out for Colorado. But And it's crazy because it's like, it's like. Colorado, um, it, it feels like their history all of a sudden doesn't matter. Like, it feels like Coach Prime is a whole different thing, yeah. a whole different era, a whole different brand. I mean, his pregame speech that I reenacted, like, that, that showed. Was, I thought you were Deion Sanders I, for a second there. I embodied his spirit a that little bit good. there. I, I went into prime mode, um, Trev prime mode. But, um, like, no, I, all I do is really order uh, food on Amazon Prime. <laughs> That's my only relation to, to the word prime. But, um no, it feels like something different is going on in Colorado, a whole different type of era, a whole different energy, and it feels like their history doesn't matter as much right now, so we'll see how that kind of unfolds. Going through the rest of the Pac-12, I mean, where do we go next? I mean, USC, we can just kind of run through it. USC looked a little better in this one. It's against yeah. Nevada, still a team I don't think is good, but their defense looked a little bit better. They were actually yeah. tackling. I saw two or three tackles in the game. So that was, I mean, that's, and that's huge for, for them. USC. They brought players to the ground uh, at yeah. least once or twice. Dude, Caleb Williams, the talk around him is always funny because I saw articles being like, he didn't do that much in week one, so good to see him in week two. I'm like, what are you watching? He He's incredible. It's like, it'll be like halftime, and he's like 20 for 25 with, 200 yards, and they're like, slow half for Caleb Williams yeah. by his standards. I'm like, bro, give me a break. I think it's just because he's the you know current Heisman front runner, and I mean, that guy's sure. so good. That guy's so he, good. He looked great. He looked yeah. great. And then, you know, on the flip side, UCLA, they played against Coastal Carolina. That was an interesting game. That was an interesting game because, you know, they were kind of struggling with the penalties and all that. And then, but then Dante Moore came in. He looked he was different. Again, great. different team. Like, like Shador Sanders with Colorado. Dante Moore, when he came into that game, um, you see they look like a different team. Kind of funny that Chip Kelly took them out after a big touchdown pass, and then he leads them again. Like, I like I like that. I said, I think, last week, I'm like, this could be like a Trevor Lawrence, Kelly Bryant situation in 2018. Mm. They started Kelly Bryant, but everybody yeah. knew that Trevor Lawrence was the guy. That, yeah. And then over the course of the season, like, it just became too obvious and Trevor Lawrence had to play. That just happened to play out in week one. Anybody with the last name Garbers, I don't trust as a Pac-12 quarterback. I feel like we've seen six Garbers. Chase Garbers, I think maybe his brother. I don't know. Yeah, but maybe. dude, sometimes you just need to pick a quarterback by how cool their name sounds. Dante Moore is a good quarterback name. That quarterback competition was was Ethan Garbers. Don't trust the name Garbers. Colin Schley, that's not a cool name. You're not no. going to be a good quarterback. That's no. like 10 interceptions waiting. Or Dante Moore. I'm going with Dante Moore every yeah, time. I like it. And the talent. But they, yeah, they look like a challenging team with them. Without Dante Moore, they look like a very ordinary team, kind of taking a step back, like mm -hmm. we maybe guessed. Mm -hmm. Didn't quite look like that with him under center, behind center. Um, and Washington, then Washington really dude, good. I think with Penix, it was like, okay, this guy was not a fluke last year. Like, yeah. this really is yeah. who he is. Dime dropper, bro. I like when RG3 was like, he throws left, but he's always right. Like, I was yeah, like, okay. Yeah. RG3 no, he, has some good. singers in there for sure. Did you see him rip his pants on TV? No, I did he not. Did, like, that makes me feel bitter about water, ripping my pants last week. Split his pants wide open. No way. Yeah, it was pretty brutal for him. But, yeah, no, Michael Penix Jr. looked great. I'm glad they pummeled on Boise State. I don't know. There's something about Boise State that rubs me the wrong way. Really? They're always like, we're the big dog in the Mountain West and always finish third.
Yeah. I don't know. They're like, we make six million in media rights, and everybody else makes four million. And they're it's blue like cool field. Flex. I mean, apparently their blue field kills birds because birds think it's a lake and they just dive on top <laughs> really? of it. Really? It's a true story. Yes, that's a true story. I swear to God, I read that somewhere and I believe it 100%. But yeah, I don't know. Danny Vigil, our local uh, PETA rep. Yeah, here in 100%. Eugene. I am local PETA rep. But yeah, Michael Penix Jr., he laid it down on Boise State. I mean, who where else could we go with? The Pac-12, I mean, just everyone. You know, Stanford yeah. looked great against Hawaii. Their quarterback, I'm blinking on his name right now, but he looked really good. Yeah, he did. Um, Ashton Davis, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and then Oregon State. Let's just, I kind of want to start Let's go with to them. Oregon and Oregon State. Uh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll start with Oregon State, may, you think? Yeah, let's do it. I, I was mean, there, just came back from a road trip. Yeah, you were there firsthand, so yeah. I want to hear your experience. But, yeah, I mean, DJU, I mean, on TV, that guy is massive. He's a big dude. He is a huge I can only imagine what he looks like in person. But, yeah, I thought DJU, I mean, I think it's clear that he wasn't the problem at Clemson. I mean, we saw that in this first game. He looked completely dominant, completely comfortable in the pocket. He had, what, two rushing touchdowns, one passing, and, you know. Three he, passing, two rushing. First there we time go. A, Three passing, first time rushing. a Beaver's done that since uh, 1996. Wow. Yeah. There we go. Already breaking records. I mean, good for DJU. He yeah. looked great. Silas Bolden, Anthony Gould. I mean, those are going to be his top targets. I mean, and then Damian Martinez. Ooh, I mean, people were talking about DJU, but I think Damian Martinez had a great, great, yeah. great game. It's not being talked about as much, but. He's still one of my front runners for Heisman. That was my whole like take. It. So I, I don't like know. it. Good that's one of my so favorite. Far. One of your takes. Yeah, man. Um, crazy trip. That's a that's a drive, dude. Getting down to San that? Jose. So let me tell you. So the first part, um, going through it, it, going through Oregon. That part of Oregon's beautiful. You pass yes. through Roseburg. Yes. You pass through Medford, Ashland, all that. Um, and then you get. So I stopped in uh, Medford. My, that was my first gas stop on the way down. Um, was choosing between in and out or Chick-fil-A. I got Chick-fil-A. I was there like, in and out's going to be in my future. And that's foreshadowing because it was in my future. And this is all very important stuff you need to know <laughs> about my trip. So I'm driving down, stop in Medford. Took a little too long eating the new, uh, you, you know, when you get at the same ads over and over. So, so basically to pass the time on my drive, I was driving down on Saturday. So I'm listening to all the games in my ear. There you go. And they keep coming up with this chicken pimento cheese sandwich yes. from Chick-fil-A over and over again and i fell victim to the ads if you think ads don't work they work uh it was implanted in my ear there you go. it was in my it's brain like inception where they plant the idea in the guy's head it was very christopher my entire trip was very christopher nolan ask him interstellar that. it was it was interstellar oppenheimer combined wow um it was a journey it was quite the journey to san jose so how was the pimento cheese sandwich man? so it was really good new new product they're trying out yes. um interesting flavor but it was so messy that i had to go inside so i oh, it was messy i really. took a lot of time i took a lot of time inside i also started off my trip late because of that colorado game wow. so so basically you know the, the the part through mount shasta that's how you say it right mount Sha shasta 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 you were shasta. there you were there the first think of the drink you know shasta drink shasta okay. yeah there you go shasta um that was beautiful. That's a beautiful part. You're yes. seeing lakes. Heads are swimming. It's a good time. Weed, California. Did you stop in there? Get a t-shirt? Weed, California was cool. Passed by there for sure. Did not get a t-shirt. Um, Darn. Or I'd be wearing it right now maybe. But no, that, go. was, that was good. Um, then it gets boring. I mean, it gets boring yeah. in that Redding, Chico area. There's some boring parts of California. And then by the time I like actually got around like Oakland, like needed to use the bathroom, had to stop again. Like So I was just... Heads were wasting time, and by yeah. heads, I mean me. Um, so I finally made it, like, pretty late on Saturday night because of all my adventures. But then the game was cool, man. San Jose State was a cool little stadium, only 20,000 fans. But, um, you know, um, cool environment. A lot of Beavs fans traveling, showing again why that that's, fan base is so cool. good. A um, lot going on on the sideline. Talked to Scott Barnes a little bit. He, nice. ex he expects uh, Reeser to – to be fully finished this this year and he was just relieved to like finally have a football game to focus on i mean you can imagine him i mean this whole off season for him i mean having to deal with his medical emergencies glad to see he's doing well i mean this whole realignment research stadium i mean i can only imagine the relief he felt actually seeing the Oregon seeing State Beavers football take like, the field seeing something happen yeah. yeah yeah a lot going on there talking to san jose state's athletic director who knows what was said there but a lot going on there before the game um but yeah then the game kicks off man and i, I was really impressed because you know, it's hard to imagine a better first half. They scored on three of four possessions um, that DJ led. They scored at the very end of the half. Um, this new clock rule, I don't know how you feel about that, but I, I don't think coaches are a fan because Oregon State Chip only Kelly got – Kelly was ripping. Yeah, he was he ripping was it. Like, this like, is just for more commercials and all yeah. that. He was not a fan. I mean, it affected them like 
four or five different times. Yeah, he's like, you're just trying to sell chicken pimento cheese sandwiches, and I'm trying to win a game with Dante Moore yeah. or Colin Schley. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So we'll see how that plays out for the rest of the year. But, yeah, I mean, how did it feel for Oregon State? Were they well, struggling? it just went quick. It, it just it was like, really quick. It went really quick for them in that first half. They only got four possessions, but they were able to score on three of them. So it was kind of flawless. But, yeah. DJ just looked like he was having fun. You know, I yes. think that was a stressful yeah. time in, in Clemson, man. I think and we'll probably talk about that a little bit, why, you know, maybe it was a stressful time at Clemson. But, um, you know, a lot of scrutiny on him, a lot of ridicule, but it looked like he was having fun out there, peppering the ball all over the field. The offensive line was really good. There was that play where he had 15, 25 minutes to throw in the pocket. Oh, yeah. It was literally yeah. like flat-footed. He that. said, I could have made a sandwich back there. <laughs> Um, yeah, which his was a own funny line. little quip from him. Like, he was just having fun out there. So, um, I thought it was a nearly flawless performance. They gave up some stuff 100%. at the end. but They had no turnovers. No turnovers. They forced a few. Um, got a fumble. Yeah. Um, and really contained a quarterback that had a lot of success against USC. Like, we thought maybe. We were talking last week. Like, this could be a shootout. Um, new defense. Also saw Ray John Wright on the sideline. Nice. Asked him, like, what he thinks about this defensive yeah. back group. And he said a lot of these guys like could have played last year. We were just so deep. So that's what I was kind of saying. I tweeted out like a little while ago, two overrated kind of talking points, the inexperience of Oregon's O-line and Oregon State's DBs. Um, and I think so far, so good. But we got a lot of football to play. 100%. I think just to put a bow, you got anything else on Oregon State? I mean, it was a good experience. Drove back. Um, got in and out on the way back to kind of right that wrong for all the in and out fans. There you um, go. Got back late last night, so I'm exhausted. That is a lot of driving, dude. Yeah, that, that is a lot. I can only imagine. But, yeah, I mean, final thing on Oregon State. I mean, they just look great. I mean, I think it's going to be pretty obvious from, you know, they're not going to be a fluke like how they had, like, you know, they had their 10-win season. I think they're very well can get another 10-win season. Yeah, I uh, do too. Oregon do State too. looks great. I mean, I'm just the, excited for them, man. The schedule really lines up for that. We said how they could start 9-1. Yes, and one. 100%. Um, pretty, I don't want to say easily because nothing's easy in the Pac-12 this year, but – the schedule sets up to maybe start nine and one. They're going to kind of ease up into it. So, got UC Davis this week. I mean, they got a breather, and then San Diego State. I think a team they should also beat. So, kind of go piece by piece yeah. and, and see how this team continually grows. But uh, the first test was really good for DJ. He just fits in that offense, very pro style. He looks very um, good. He looks very good. The run game complementing him. It seems like he's been coached up really well by Brian Lindgren. So yeah, they had a good game. The offensive line was nuts, as we already kind of said. The defense was really good. Um, so just going to have continual improvement. We also got to look at Aiden Childs at the very end, which shows how good of a yeah. game it went. Um, and he threw a 15-yard pass and a 9-yard run. We haven't been hyping him up for no reason. He looked talented. So he did look good, yeah. That's a very interesting development because he was the first guy off the bench. Probably see him again next week against UC Davis. And I feel like any glimpse at him is a look at the Beavs' future, and that's a guy that they've got to be – working to keep out of the portal I mean, these coming years. I mean, during fall practice, they were saying in the spring game, they're like, hey, look out for Aiden Childs. He might yeah. be that guy. I mean, if I mean, him coming off the bench after DJU clearly First shows guy there, he yeah. Be, he is going to be that guy. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, stoked for Oregon State. I think it's great seeing Oregon State being good in the Pac-12. We'll see what happens for the rest of the year, man. But, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for them. Yeah, rare that we ta uh, start with Oregon State over Oregon, but I think that has to do a little bit with the opponent. I don't think Oregon played the best of one, but I'll tell you what, man. I don't know if I've ever seen 81 points no. since Kobe dropped on somebody's head. Like, yeah. that was crazy. 81? Like, I don't care who you're playing. That's that's impressive. And even, like, our predictions. I mean, like, I, I think you had, like, 63. 63. I had, like, 56, 15 or something like that. And we were, like, halfway there. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And seeing 81-7, I mean, like, I'll be real. Like, I did watch the game to a good amount, but, like, second quarter, like, going into halftime, I was like, all right, I'm going to switch to other games. But, yeah, I mean, Oregon Ducks look great. Bo Nix looked awesome. Ty Thompson even looked pretty good when he stepped in there for yeah. uh, a while. I was actually surprised, though, if you saw there was obviously Troy Franklin. And then Gary Bryan Jr. had yeah. the second most. He had 100. He broke 100 point. yards. That's a good so point. that was interesting to see, especially bringing in Tez Johnson and Trey Sean Holden. Gary Bryan, I mean, former USC wide receiver. Very Always talented. thought he was good there. Always thought he was good there. Yeah, so it was great seeing him getting, you know, 100 yards. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Oregon just dominated Portland State. Front, I mean, yeah. everywhere, all across the ball. Which was always going to happen, but I think the way that they did it was maybe a little shocking. Maybe Portland State just is that bad. Like, maybe they're a 3-9 and nine team in the FCS, which is definitely possible because it didn't seem like they could tackle anyone in yeah. Oregon scoring on every play. Yeah. But still an interesting game from a lot of, like, injury perspectives. No Evan Williams out there. No Noah Whittington. Of course, Dan's not going to talk about that. I was watching a crystal ball press conference for some reason last night, and I was struck by, like, how much he did talk about stuff like I, I wasn't Holden? yeah I wasn't really here but like 
he did talk about injuries and stuff. He was not he as tight-lipped. Yeah. yeah. Like, he would actually, like, go into detail. It's just interesting. The juxtaposition, Dan Laney did not talk about any of it. But no. that was kind of interesting to me, that, that aspect of it. Who, who missed the game? What does that mean for Texas Tech, which is a big one? We could talk about that. But Texas Tech lost to Wyoming, um, double overtime. Wyoming, double overtime, which is crazy. I don't know if that helps or hurts the Ducks. What do you think? I don't think it really helps them that much because, I mean, I mean, Texas Tech was favored in that game. So we'll see what happens when we go over to Lubbock. I think that might we still might see a very different Texas Tech team being at home in Lubbock. I think they have a chip on their shoulder after that heartbreaking loss against Wyoming. So we'll see what happens. I think it's not going to be a walk in the park when we go over there. I think Oregon's going to, you know, they're going to get a taste of Texas. So I'm, I'm very excited for that game. But, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. Yeah, Oregon, they look great. I mean, our running backs, Bucky Irving, Jordan James, had yeah. their touchdowns. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else really you could say about Oregon. But, I mean, just Yeah, just the Texas Tech game, around. though. I mean, the Tyler Shuck uh, aspect is going to be interesting, how yes. he plays against his old team. I think dealing with that environment um, is going to be interesting for this Ducks team. Um, because I think Lubbock's going to be crazy. I think that stadium's going to be crazy. I think it's going to be – it's a good litmus test for the team, not just going against a total cupcake. But I think that Wyoming game shows I don't think this is the game we thought it was going to be mm -mm. at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And obviously it's week one. A lot can happen. But defensively, I don't think Texas Tech's going to be able to do anything to stop Bo Nix. And I think no. it's going to be kind of another stop along his Heisman campaign, kind of like what Caleb Williams has had. Um, all right, so let's give you want to give score predictions for these two games: UC Davis, Oregon State, and uh, and Texas Tech, Oregon. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. What do, you, what do you got for Oregon, Texas Tech? Oregon, Texas Tech. So I just said I think I think it's gonna be 42-24, Oregon. I think the offense is not gonna miss a beat. I think maybe a little bit of a slow start, but I think they pull, especially with the lack of possessions. Um, but I think they get some big plays in the second half and really pull away with this one late, kind of like that Florida State game, mm -hmm. which we'll touch on in our last block after the break. Um, but yeah, Oregon 42-24. I just don't think um, I don't think Shuck's going to be able to keep up. I think it could be a big statement for Oregon's defense. Um, so yeah, that's what I got. I got 35-21. I think Oregon's going to okay. come out on top. I think it's going to be a little closer in the first half, but I think second half Oregon's just going to walk away with it. Um, yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens. I like I said, I'm really excited to see Texas Tech. I mean, it's going to be exciting for Bo Nix. It's going to be excited for Oregon. Just to really, it's going to be a big game nationwide. So yeah, I'm excited for it though. Cool, cool. Oregon State, UC Davis, you got a pick? I'll say, just to get it on the record, um, how many are they going to put up? I don't know. This is going to be fun because I think we'll see a lot of Childs in this one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they'll probably keep going. You know what? I'll, I'll give the Beavs 52. I'll go 52-10. Yeah. I, I was seriously going to say 52-14. We'll see what happens. I think Twins. Oregon's just going to – Oregon State's going to walk in there. And, yeah, we're going to see Aiden Childs. I think we're going to see – New Reeser, too. We might see – yeah, and, and Reeser. So, I'm excited for that. Yeah, I think it's going to be a blowout win. I think we're going to see DJU just put on a performance, a master class in the first half. See Aiden Childs in the second half. See Bengal the Branson. future of Oregon State. We'll see what happens. Bengal Branson. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, Damian Martinez, I think, is just going to help his Heisman – campaign it's a good point on him so, what you said earlier because 145 yards and that o-line was creating holes and that's what i'm saying big like, 20 yard, eight yard gain at the end of the first half exactly. he, had a good, he had a good game that didn't really, really get talked game. about so by many people daniel martinez heisman candidate i'm calling it right now right this here guy's your biggest fan there's your camera I'm, I'm his biggest fan man all right well uh we're big fans of the craziness of week one after the break we're going to quickly touch on some of the bigger upsets um and then we will get out of here for this episode of the td show we'll be right back All right, welcome back to the TD Show. You know, saw some people complaining a little bit about this week one slate of games. I didn't think it was the best. Um, I was wrong. We saw, I mean, it's college football. Incredible stuff is always going to happen. And there were a ton of just, like, shocking results. I mean, yeah. you go through it. I mean, we talked about Colorado TCU. That was one of the biggest ones. Um, Ohio State didn't look that good against Indiana. But then the real upsets started happening. Um, you had, obviously, Duke over Clemson Monday night. It was uh, ridiculous. <laughs> Basketball school being a football uh, school, that was fun. I mean, for them to get physically dominated, maybe we'll touch on it. We'll, t we'll, we'll keep going through it. Um, Florida State physically dominating LSU. Um, UNC, I think not a lot of people – a lot of people had them beating South Carolina, but not in the manner no. um, that they did it. Uh, a total domination there. So, um, a lot of crazy results already, and, and we're already learning a lot um, about some of these teams. So we'll start with you on this, and then I'll go 
Um, what surprised you the most about week one of college football? Uh, I mean, the obvious one would be Colorado, but I'm not going to be obvious. Honestly, the one for me, at least, was Fresno State beating Purdue at home. Oh. You know, Mikey Keene coming in there from I UCF. Like I, I like mean, that. no one had the Mountain West beating Purdue. There and, yeah, Fresno State came in there, won in a good fashion. Mikey Keene looked great, four touchdowns, 366 yards. So that one surprised me the most. I always have a little soft spot for Fresno State. They were my first ever college football game. It was nice. them against SDSU at Qualcomm Stadium. So, Heck yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm Fresno State was the one that surprised right me the most, I love honestly. That. Uh, if I were to pick a second, probably Cal against North Texas. I mean, mm. 50, what was it, like 52 to 21? They just completely creamed. You didn't expect them to go in there to Denton, my uh, – Your my, hometown? My, my <laughs> fortress. Your fortress, exactly. Yeah, did not expect that from Cal. Uh, definitely gave them, like, finishing, like, bottom last two in the Pac-12. So, they look great against North Texas. But, yeah, I would say Fresno State and Cal were my two. Like, oh, my God, wow. That was interesting. Yeah, crazy for Purdue, the, the decline of, of Graham Harrell, who's now the offensive coordinator there. Offensive coordinator in Denton, Texas, at North Texas, then USC, yeah. uh, and then West Virginia fails there and now at Purdue. He's had a very... Very rough little... Is that a bell graph? Is that a parabola? We That's can't... Some, some math you're throwing at me. I don't remember. I, once, once I finished math in college, I forgot all about I'm it. Doing that some, looks good, though. I'm doing something here. <laughs> something with a slope. Something with a Y equals MX plus B. Okay. Uh, my um, thing I'm surprised about is the slope of the ACC. I mean, mm. maybe I shouldn't have been surprised, but I think it's the physicality that they played with. Uh -huh. It's Duke punching Clemson in the mouth over and over again, <sighs> despite not even playing their best game. Like, the fact that they fumbled the ball yeah. and had turnovers and had a ton of penalties and still outplayed Clemson. I mean, I don't know what is going on um, in Clemson, South Carolina, but it doesn't feel good. Mm -mm. It doesn't feel good at all. Yeah, DJ. Death Valley, man. Yeah, DJ shining his debut. It's early in the season. Um, they bring in offensive coordinator Garrett Riley. Yeah. Um, expected to kind of revitalize, but I don't know if they understand offense there anymore. I don't know what's going on. They they never seem to have a rhythm, a flow, an identity. Didn't help that they coughed the ball up too twice in the red zone. And, I mean, it might say something about the coach, man. I mean, you know, he was one of the head guys that was so anti against NIL. Yeah. You know, he was very anti the transfer portal. And in this day and age, the transfer portal is now, I feel like, going to be the standard for college football teams. With Dabo, I mean, he didn't really go after it this year. So, fair. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I mean, it's definitely a punch in the mouth, like you said, for Clemson, for Dabo Sweeney. So, yeah, I mean, it was interesting. ACC, I mean, Florida State. LSU, another game that was crazy. I'm oh, sorry, I'm, in, I'm getting too comfortable. But, yeah, I mean, that one surprised you, obviously. What were the other ones that surprised you? Oh, so you're just going to, by the way, uh, on, on that Dabo note, this show is made in the name, image, and likeness of Pod. Um, just <laughs> to go back. <laughs> so you're just going to gloss. Oh, Pod. I just got that now. <laughs> it took you a second. It took you a little delay. That was good. That was good. It's a little delayed. That but, was good. So you're just going to gloss over your LSU playoff pick there? Whoa, whoa, You whoa. were just going hey, to try to slide that to the side, the fact that you were hyping up LSU all offseason long on every show we had, and they get killed by Florida State? Murdered. <laughs> they got murdered. Uh, bloodbath on national television. I don't know why. I was just like, you. Brian Kelly's going to get it this year. Mm -hmm. And he did it. And it sucks. Jaden Daniels got a hit sticked at one point. I mean, yeah. just picked yeah. up and slammed on the ground. I mean, it was a tough, tough outing for LSU. My playoff picture's not looking too good. Mine's Florida looking State good. looks great. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, LSU, that was just. You were having a tough time watching no, that one? No bueno. Yeah, I kind of turned it off halfway through. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? I'm done. Trevor's going to rip into me about this yeah. later. But, yeah, no, tough showing for LSU Tigers, man. Did not like that one one bit. Yeah, tough days for the uh, – tough weeks for the SEC. Florida losing to Utah. LSU losing to Florida State. South Carolina getting killed by UNC. Um, and then a tough week, obviously, for Clemson. Tough for the Big 12, too. We didn't mention yeah, that. But Big 12. Texas State beating Baylor and then Wyoming beating Texas Tech. Like, what? Texas State is the only team in Texas to win a game on week one. <laughs> really? Yeah, they were the only Texas school to win a game. So, that's interesting. I mean, we'll Texas see what happens. Forever. Yeah, we'll see what happens this next week with Alabama and uh, UT Austin. That's I know I hit that, threw it down. One. Boom. Texas hate week is here. Be careful. You can, like, get fined in the state of... Vince Young punched the a guy in a bar for doing that to his face. <laughs> true story. That's actually a true story. <laughs> Look it is up. Is that what derailed his rookie year, or was that the reason? That or when the Texas Longhorns... You know they're actually banned from Disneyland? The Texas Longhorns as a team? The team is banned because when they went there to play <laughs> against your USC... 
they obviously, you know, they wherever they're at, they always go check out the fun stuff. And they wrote, I think they wrote like Go Longhorns or something on Tower of Terror. You can't like do that. Top. You can't deface. They're banned for life. Texas Longhorns are not allowed as in a unit. Disneyland. Are you serious? I don't know if it's California Adventure or Disneyland, but they're not allowed. So this is our best podcast ever. Texas Hate way. Week, man. Let it begin. I love that. How dare you deface the Tower of Terror? That's it's like not even Tower of Terror ride. anymore. It's Guardians of the Galaxy. I know. I hate that too. Yeah, I don't the like it either. The, the original Tower of Terror it was trippy. That's what I'm saying. And it's less trippy. You move around the thing. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no, All no. the ghosts and stuff. And I was yeah. just Chris Pratt. I don't need that. I see him enough everywhere else in my daily life. Um, okay. <laughs> Florida State destroying LSU. Yes. I'll make one last point, and then we're going to get out of here pretty soon um, and, and look forward to, uh, to next week and all, all the great things we have um, going on, that Texas-Alabama mm-hmm. game. There's going to be a ton to talk about next week. But here's the thing. I was talking about this with a friend, and – the quarterback play in the NCAA this year is ridiculous. I, yes. think, I think that's for a couple reasons. I think that's the transfer portal, so you no longer have as many like good backups. Like mm-hmm. Everyone's starting. Mm-hmm. Everyone's playing somewhere. And then, obviously, the pandemic. That's why you have Bo Nix again. That's why you have Michael Penix again, um, Jaden Daniels. Um, a lot of those guys that started in 2019 are still playing. Counterexamples, of course, JT Daniels and uh, – Keaton Slovis, who are continuing to be terrible um, in their 17th year of college JT football. Daniels, Rice Owls. He's <laughs> lost to Texas three times, and Texas hasn't beaten anybody three times. Yeah, that's brutal. Um, brutal fashion. Yeah. I don't know if he's banned from Disneyland. He might be at this point. He's he never going to win a Super Bowl, so he won't go there for that. Um, <laughs> it's been our best episode by far. I just want to put that on the record. That's a great one. Um, but for those two reasons, this is the best quarterback play. I think we've seen it a long time. But here's the thing. It's not really distributed in the SEC, the conference we think of as traditionally the best. They had a rough week, too. But, you know, you have Spencer Rattler there. You have Jaden Daniels. But then you have a lot of – and and those guys didn't have that great of week ones. But then you have a lot of unknowns like uh, Carson Beck, like uh, Jalen Milrow. Whereas in the Pac-12, you have legit NFL-ready guys. You have Bo Nix. You have Michael Penix. You have Shadour. You have Dante Moore. You you have everyone we've been talking about. And then in the ACC – Riley Leonard, Drake May, um, Jordan Travis, yeah. all NFL guys. So I don't know what's happening. I, I don't, I don't want to put the you know tombstone on the SEC just yet, but it feels like at least from a quarterback play perspective, the best quarterbacks in the nation right now are in the ACC and the Pac-12. I there think. you go. I like that. I like that. Uh, that's, a, that's a great take, man. I'm a huge There's fan of that. There's some great quarterbacks in both. I think – I think Riley Leonard was awesome, um, and I think obviously what we got in the Pac-12 is awesome. Oregon volleyball, awesome to start the season. They are yes. six and zero. Excited to keep following that. Oregon women's soccer, uh, not having a good time. They are zero four and one. So we'll see if they can turn it around. But they get relegated. Th- <laughs> I mean, going, at this point, maybe. Hopefully not. I like Graham Abel. They're going. I with like the Oregon, Oregon soccer. They might be going with the Oregon State to the Mountain West. That'd be fun. There you go. I like that. We need a relegation system. So that Oregon State football doesn't get going, (laughs) doesn't have to go uh, back to San Jose every year. All right, we're going to get out of here with this episode of the TD Show to celebrate week one. We'll be back with uh, our recap of week two of college football next week. As always, horns down. Our time is now. Trev Prime.